Christine Holgate has been called the rock star of Australian business. Would you please welcome Christine Holgate? Not everything in my life has gone smooth and, um, you know, it can be sometimes a bit emotional for me and it's very, very personal. However, I hold in my heart some values, what I believe in, and one of those is giving back. And I was extremely fortunate that somebody gave back to me early on in my life. And so today is actually, this one's for her. I was a rebel without, without a cause, trapped in a village I didn't want to be in, longing to be at the other side of the world. A suitcase in the hallway saying, live by my rules or you're out. You know, it's a defining moment for me. And I knew at that moment, this was my chance. I grabbed hold of the suitcase and started to negotiate with my mother would she buy me a ticket to Manchester Railway Station? How much money would my dad give me to go away? I slept that night in Euston Railway Station, and the next day I found myself a bed sit. It was pretty miserable. But I got myself a job as a waitress in a burger bar. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> the only night I ever had off was a Sunday, and out of sheer loneliness, I went to the local church and I walked in for evening song. This old lady came over and accosted me. I'm pretty sure she thought I was there to rob the silver. And when she saw me, I think she sort of adopted me, almost like the stray dog on the doorstep. But she kept telling me, you can't be a waitress. You can't have my life. You owe it to me and to all other women who have no choices. You have to go to college and you have to study and you're going to have to listen. But with her support and encouragement, I applied for every scholarship going. I went on to do three postgraduate degrees, an MBA. I studied Chinese for three years, all on someone else's money. I received a call from the headhunter who had recruited me in. And he asked me to meet Marcus Blackmore. He was the chair of the natural health company Blackmore's. He was looking for a CEO. However, when I walked in, the whole board was sitting there. It was an interesting moment. But I suspect within minutes, both Marcus and I formed a bond. He asked me, why should he give me the keys to his bank account? And I challenged him, why should I give you the keys to my career? I was asked, how would I be like working for this very domineering male? I said, after six months, I couldn't be able to work for him. I'd work with him, but he'd have to work for me. He tore a piece of paper, wrote down his mobile number, and said, I want to work for you. Call me. And that was the beginning of amazing partnership. I thought about just one word that I thought was so important to leadership and has had such a, an incredible impact in my life. It's the word belief. Belief in others and belief in yourself. That's what Marcus Blackmore did with me. I had no experience of natural health. I'd never run a publicly listed company, but in those few moments of meeting me, he believed in me and gave me the keys to his bank account. That old lady believed in me, and I hope by now, I start to believe in others and pass back to people all the things that they have given to me. One of the negatives for women in the workforce, that to show emotion is immediately seized on by some as a sign of weakness. It's important to you to be that way, isn't it? Why? Yeah, I, th I think that's nonsense. Everybody's emotional. But actually, emotion is real. And if you give me someone who shows me no emotion, do not have them on my team. There are so many people who might have the passion and might have the dream and might even have the ability who aren't going to make it to the top, who, who, who will have to settle for second best for whatever reason. And that, that is a reality, isn't it? Success does not have to be running a company. So I think we should not always judge success in these categories. There are many different ways that people can feel they've been successful in their lives. For some, it's having a family. In the text that would go out to shareholders, um, your phone number would be attached. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you were quite open about wanting feedback, you, you welcomed responses. Mm. My first business card had none of my contact details on it, so I changed it and made sure they were on it in bold. 
And I even put my name and personal mobile on the customer complaints website um, because I, there was no name or phone number for people to call after hours. And so I was challenging the team that if I'm prepared to do it, we have to give customers you know, somewhere to respond. And yes, it does mean very often I wake up to several hundred emails. How on earth do you deal with that? I, do you know what? I just do. Because if, if I was a customer and I was so pissed off that I had to go to the CEO, I would want that CEO to see it. And it would only by, by listening to those customers can we fix the business. Otherwise, I'm protected. I'm told what they want me to hear. Christine Holgate, you've set a new bar uh, for these lunches, which is a big thing to say, but you have. Thank you very much Thank for joining you. us today. Thank you.